all right welcome back to y254 tv in case and i will not be lent in saying it in case you're just getting to join us this is one morning hashtag wcw and the strength of a woman where we get to crash on our queens and before we took that short commercial break we had mev who was telling us quite an amount of things and i'd want us to go back to where we left it at but now i want us to pick it at this point here um, um screenwriting mm -hmm. uh, it's it's just it's just interesting how you're I, I, i'd love to call you a jack of all trades <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> but you know it's just it's interesting how you um how you maneuver a lot of things how did you end up at screenwriting how, okay now before we i ask you how did you end up at screenwriting please please tell us what screenwriting is um screenwriting is basically script writing uh, for films and TV shows, yeah? Mm -hmm. Because you see it on the screen, so screen writing, <laughs> right for the so screen. So you are it as a screenplay? Yes, yes, yeah. yes, written writers, by... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so that is basically screen writing. But I think screen writing is a fancy word of a script writer. Yeah, because you want to remind people it's TV. <laughs> There are courses I did in school and I'm still wondering, was, it, was the title necessary <laughs> writing for the screen? <laughs> right? It's still script writing. Yeah. But now, how did you end up at screen writing? Um, it's a very funny story. I, I, don't say, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know if it's destiny or what, but uh, I'll take you back a little bit to growing up. Uh, like I said, we didn't have people to show us the right way mm -hmm. uh, to go. So growing up, I used to really love writing. Actually, my compositions were among those, actually the ones that were read on parade because they were 38 out of 40 not to brag. Eh? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I, I used to be a good writer and, my, and the teacher always commended me about how I'm articulating my thoughts and everything, yeah? But uh, it went on to high school and uh, college now. But now I didn't know what to do with my writing i didn't know that it if it was a career that someone could pursue all we knew back then was journalism is the only thing you can be when you want to be on tv or to do anything for tv so it kind of died and through the frustration i i was a reader also so through the frustration of not knowing what to do with my writing i stopped writing and i stopped also uh, reading i went and pursued um cpa it was everyone's go to choice because our parents used to the white collar job mm -hmm. they wanted us to work in offices wearing suits so yeah like every other person i went and pursued cpa but then it wasn't something i wanted so i dropped out in the middle i think cpa too i dropped <laughs> out <yeah. laughs> and then uh, i like working i like solving people's problems because i tend to believe i'm a very understanding person and i know how to deal with people. Maybe that's why I went into humanitarian works. Mm -hmm. So I sought for a career that allows me to be around people, to listen to people and to solve people's problems. So I did HR, human resource, and I finished. And uh, I worked for about two years. Was it two? 2014 to 20, no. I graduated in 2015 and then I worked to around 2018. And I wasn't feeling satisfied in my job, so it kind of got to me and I I wasn't happy at my workplace. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, it started consuming me kidogo kidogo until I quit. I just quit because I didn't feel like it was serving me. So at work, I used to find myself writing a book. I was writing a book. But I was writing a book about my frustrations in life, not really a book that <laughs> had meaning. Because I really wanted to write. That mm -hmm. is the point, yeah? So you'll find at work I'm not working. I'm not doing the work that I'm supposed to be doing. I'm just writing. So at some point I quit my work and then um, I stayed home. So when I stayed home, or when I was at home, I found myself, I started a blog actually. <laughs> though I wrote for only four things four articles I started a blog because I was trying to bring to 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 be myself to write so there was someone there, there's a lady who had an impressor shop back at home and I really thank you Janelle <laughs> 
because she's the one who connected me to someone who now nurtured my writing and showed me how to write and everything. Yeah, so I landed at one, I haven't studied for script writing or whatever. Uh, I, I, I landed a, a writing role at one of the TV dramas, well known and yeah, TV dramas at another station and I wrote for them for about two years until just the end of, towards the end of last year when my contract ended and but now by then I had learned how to write, I had known how to write for TV, the rules and everything. Yeah, so when my contract for TV ended, I ventured out on my own and now I want to do films. Actually, I already have two films that are already written and ready to be produced, yeah? But now I'm in the process of, yeah. So, so far you've written, you've written, uh, you can say you've written one TV drama or there are more? Sorry? You can say you've written one TV drama or there are more? Yeah, I've written for one TV drama, one TV. several episodes. You're paid for it? Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm asking because that time yeah. that people, people do these pro bono services because, you know, I am not professional in that area. Mm -hmm. uh, I yeah, will give true. it a try. Let me see. You know? Yeah, Actually, right. while I was going into it, I didn't expect to be paid. Okay. So, so You see? Yeah, I didn't expect to be paid because I was so green. So, yeah, thank God they paid me. <laughs> And they gave me the morale. So what, what do you fancy writing about? Um, you know, what genre will you, will you say you would um, major on? Like, um, in terms of maybe romance, comedy, sci-fi, uh, you know, yeah. <laughs> I'm not good with science, so I won't write for sci-fi. <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> Plus, I don't think I'm funny, so I can't write for comedy. <laughs> but actually, one of one of the films I have written two films. One of it I've written with a friend who now is funny. So I brought the we we we, we um we brought our strengths together. She brought the comedic part, and I brought <laughs> the other creative part. So yeah, comedy is not for me, but. Uh, Mostly, even when I was writing for TV, I found myself um, pushing in so much about life experiences. So I think I'll say, I'll life, I'll write about life, challenges in life, uh, um, motivation, something to give people motivation, and yeah, what genre is that? Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm being told I was the wrong side. Okay. So um, I want you to briefly say something about your peace ambassador, uh, ambassadorial work. Okay. Um, generally, I'm a very peaceful person. I never forget to say that because I'm a very peaceful person. And um, when we were appointed these roles, it was at the elections were just around the corner. And uh, we all know that um, our country hasn't, has, during elections, our country goes few steps back to the because of the and everything. So during that time that we were elected, we were majoring on advocating for peaceful elections. So we did that. I wrote a couple of uh, short scripts about it and uh, published them on social media. And... Um, Past post elections, now we advocated for peaceful um, correlations with our. F Actually, yesterday was uh, was it the national peace? Um, national peace something. Living with peace uh, with each other. So we try our best to preach peace wherever we go, because honestly speaking, peace is the foundation of development it's 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 the base of every um development that happens without peace there cannot be development and we see what happens when people are rioting and are on the other side of peace mm -hmm. so yeah we can say we are advocates for 
better li uh, living peacefully with each other okay. and okay. Yeah. finally I really I really wish we had more time to talk <laughs> more about a couple of other things but finally say something about your mentorship program okay like I said uh, towards at, at the beginning of the show I like dealing with boys mostly maybe because uh, I feel like I have a son and I however I have seen the world go I wouldn't want him to grow with that mentality and uh, so I and I have seen I have a father and I have a brother and I have seen challenges that they have gone through which are not supposed to be challenges in the first place. So I try to bridge that gap of making the boy child uh, realize some aspects about their life that are not really supposed to be ignored. And when they are not ignored, meaning they will, um, they will do better as men. Honestly speaking, at some point I felt frustrated because um, First of all, um, I, I raise my child away from the dad. I don't say I'm a single parent. I don't like that word. So I raise my child away from the dad. So I feel with better mentorship, some parents don't necessarily have to raise their kids like as single parents without the, um, partner. the partner. Not necessarily them being together, but the partner being there for the son. So or for the child, sorry. So my mentorship program is, is, is basically to raise better men, our boys today to be better men, because sorry to say for the men that are in studio, but I believe there's something that is lacking in the men. And it is not lacking because it's supposed to lack. It's lacking because maybe they were, there is something missing while they are growing up, some form of education, some form of um, awareness or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. I advocate, I advocate for boy child and the mental health and their needs and their self-awareness to say the least. Using that camera, please give us a parting shot. <sighs> okay. Uh, so, being a woman, a mother and a, son, a, a sister and a daughter, I have been able to to, to to analyze certain aspects of life with my mother, with my father and my siblings and my child. And um, I think the most important thing in life is for someone to be self-aware of themselves because it's the beginning of a lot of a realization that will help you navigate through life. The disappointment that come, if you be, if you know yourself, if you understand yourself, you will deal with them better. If you understand yourself, as compared to if you don't understand yourself, like I can relate with you better if I understand myself and I understand how far I can stretch with you and anyone else for that matter. So I'd like to urge everyone to really, really. Um, go for self-awareness because it's the beginning of a, a, a lot of um, a lot of what a lot of progress in your life okay yes thank you so much for coming thank you what so much what three for things can you leave the house without now as a woman sorry sorry what three things can you leave the house without hey it's a it's more than three <laughs> give us three <laughs> My wet wipes, I don't leave them behind. Mm -hmm. I sent either a perfume or a body splash. Okay. And uh, what else? What else? I think my ID, no, not my ID. My, I, I, in my bag, I usually have like a toy for my son that reminds me of him every time I go into my bag. So basically, it's something that reminds me of my child, my wet wipes and uh, perfume. Okay. Thank you so much for coming. <laughs> Thank you for your time. We Thank appreciate you. Thank you also for having me. Thank You're you. You're welcome. All right. That was Mev Muturi, who is Miss Universe Kenya. And she is wearing so many hats. I'm sure if you've been following 
since this conversation began, you have seen the work that she has been able to do. That is the strength of a woman this week.